That's Boxing Podcast. With dust and coach. That's Boxing. All right, welcome everybody in to the That's Boxing Podcast. That's tentative boxing. title. Tentative That's Boxing. Title. Um, we're here chilling in the gym today. Yeah, man. Struggling to open our coffee. If I'd known we were going to be on video, I would have worn cool camo cutoffs, but... You know, so you can't pull it off anyway. That's true. I can't compete. Can't uh, but we're going to run through some fights, talk about a crazy weekend of boxing, I feel like. If every weekend was like that, there'd be more boxing fans. I would not have yeah. a girlfriend. I would not have a relationship. <laughs> I would not be well adjusted. Um, but yeah, Friday and Saturday night, two cards on Saturday. Um, a DAZN and the first ever Amazon at right. WC, which was great. I did not catch any fights on DAZN. No, I stayed up extra late that night and ran back uh, on the replay. Uh, wow! For that, for that fight. Yeah, that's... I'm still in a bit of a disowned boycott. Um, it takes a lot for me to cross over and watch yeah, that. Yeah, that two forty nine ninety nine. Mm. Yeah, they hurt my feelings with that one. Yeah, but I'll, I'll watch. I'll figure out a way to watch it if there's a good enough fight. Was there anything good on there? I don't know. It was uh, Zerdo Ramirez. Oh, Zerdo, right? Uh, yeah, on Is... Gulamirian, which was a uh... cruiserweight. Yep, it yeah. was an interesting fight. Okay, well, let's back it up. Let's start on Friday. What happened Friday? So Friday, uh, you know, headline event: Oscar Valdez versus Liam Wilson. Right, right, main event. What a fight, man. I mean, I was alone in my house at the watching that fight, and I jumped up and started clapping and cheering yep. when they when he got the stoppage. Yep. I was so fucking happy for him. Yep. And that was such like a rocky kind of moment. Oh, and his speech afterwards, like, I just want to show everybody in life you get knocked down, but you can come back. And then, <laughs> oh, my God. And he was coming off that lackluster performance, right? And he just, yeah. Yeah. Very it, impressive. It was super impressive, yeah. And... I mean, the, but that guy Smith, he kind of, I mean, he admitted he, he, he admires the Mexican style. He wanted to go in there yeah, and fight like a Mexican. Trade. But you can't out Mexican a Mexican. No, Man, it's just no. not possible. Just be an Australian, whatever that yeah. is. Yeah. I don't think they've defined <laughs> themselves as a style yet. And maybe this weekend they define themselves as on the losing end of some of these fights. But mm -hmm. they need to figure out a style and stick to it. You know, That's I don't true. think it's a bad should... weekend for Australians. Three Australian losses. Who's the third? I believe. Uh, Aris, Larry, Aris Landry Lara versus uh, Michael Zarafa. Zarafa's an Australian? I believe so. Okay. We're going to have to edit this out if I'm wrong. I missed that when I had to run out and get a pizza. I'm pretty sure he's fight. Australian. Yeah, he got blasted out of there, but we'll get to that one. Yeah, well, Lara's another guy doing it. For, you know, makes me stand up and clap because he's like 41 old years old. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, older than me. He's still doing it. So, okay, what else happened? So, Valdez with the impressive win. And then on the undercard, I always have to highlight... Uh, Kiki Torres. Oh yeah, Kiki, your guy, One of my man. Favorites. I mean, anytime you, you get a chance to take a picture with a fighter, you're friends for life. Yeah, so that's yeah. your guy. Funny thing is, so uh, he's my girlfriend's favorite boxer, and she couldn't watch the fight, so I was like, oh, "I'll record it for you, like on my phone, right?" Because it's on the ESPN. I don't know how to like record it off the screen, and I know well, it's probably only going to be about 45 seconds, so I don't have to hold the phone up that long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Did enough. it go? Did it go past the first round? No, no, it was like it's... two and a half in the first round. Got yeah, him out of there. That that opponent was a big dude, and he looked pretty yeah. comfortable in the first yeah. minute. I said, "Oh, he's got a." I thought Torres had his work cut out for him. I said, "Finally, we're going to see this guy get past the first and second rounds." But you know, he did go the distance against that dude down in Florida. Yeah, in his last fight. But for the most part, he's known for knocking guys out in the yeah. first round. Too much vo like volume and power combined. I feel like it's yeah. just too much for anybody to to hang with. Yeah, when you see these lower level heavyweights sparring and, and competing, it's low output. It's low energy. Mm -hmm. You know. And this guy comes in there just throwing. Yeah. And like, I don't think they're prepared for that. I don't think they're sparring for that. No. You know, and, Which you and, should be. I mean, he's got plenty of tape. You think that's what you understand he's going to do. you got to yeah. earn your respect quick and yeah. back him up. And, you know, but, yeah, he's one of my favorites, man. And he's young. He's only 24. I mean, I see that dude. Like, I can already see him being like a, an analyst in, right. in 10 years, right. 20 years. Because he's got you know, the boxing he's, he's knowledge. Got, he's got the knowledge. He's got the personality. Right. He's got the, the business savvy. He's made himself a star already. Yeah, you know, so yeah, that was a great fight. My, my question with him is always, what's next? What? Because it feels like he's running through everything they're lining up. Yeah, and it's who's he on a collision course with? Where, where's the step up in competition? Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, if within top rank, um, you know, eventually him versus Jared Anderson would be like that's my question. The big you, American show. You got show. your two kind of stars potentially. Do you have them fight early, or do you kind of wait? And I try think they'll to wait for up? a long time on that, but. But they need to step it up. They they do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. Uh, well, moving on to the main card, Amazon, getting in the business. I paid for this one. Uh, oh, wait. I wanted to say real quick before oh, yeah. that. Was it on the main card? Uh, Martinez hmm. uh, on Friday night? Martinez. Uh, El Rey. Uh, the, 
it was was that on yeah that was on the um on the Valdez undercard uh because uh, that was the por la raza card no no really Martinez. these are Marsan versus cordova yeah oh, that was on the amazon card oh that was that was man yeah. there was so See, much they're boxing blend, they're all blending together okay oh you know what it was it was the um estrada versus by mm. the lady fight mm -hmm. oh yeah, 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 yeah co-main yeah. event yeah that one was notable for a couple of reasons uh a big cut in the first round mm -hmm. and then some terrible corner work mm. to deal with the cut mm. it was it was out of control how bad this the cut work was she comes back to the corner you see the head clash in real time she comes back to the corner and wipes the blood away and like does one of these sits right. down it's probably 10 or 20 seconds before anybody in the corner notices she's not only bleeding but she has a gash above her eye, eyebrow huh. and they're wiping and it's bleeding they're wiping. and wiping finally the, the head coach says oh get in here the cut man gets in and he's not prepared they're digging around in the in an ice bag and pull out an unopened vial of adrenaline. What? And they're holding the adrenaline there. Wow. And the, well, it's too late, man. It's right. a, it's a, you have to draw it out with a syringe. You know, it's got wow. a, like a little rubber stopper on top. Right. So they're trying to deal with it. The guy's fumbling around. Hmm. Chick's bleeding, and then uh, she needs water. She's like, th she thinks somebody starts tipping the adrenaline towards her mouth like it's water. <laughs> what? Like they're just so. Oh, wow, I missed this. So out of sorts. I took a couple of screenshots of it to show you. It's ridiculous, and um, you know and that cut kept bleeding through the night. Right. And they said the cut man was uh, was the coach of Subriel Matias, who's like this boogeyman in the 140 pound right, division. Right. So maybe they had him there as like a, an assistant coach, but not really a cut man. They needed right. like a Stitch Duran or a Mike Basil, right? Or somebody who knows how to handle a cut with their their medicine ready. At one point, I saw the cut man reusing a swab that right. had blood on it before he even went back. <laughs> uh oh. And that's just telling me they don't have their medicine ready. They don't yeah. have their equipment ready. Yeah. And she lost the fight fair and square. Homegirl just danced on her the whole night yep. and used her awkwardness to win. So, mm -hmm. But that was a – I yeah, couldn't that help that jerky kind of twitch style. Just couldn't really, couldn't really crack the code. But it exactly. feels like on the cut man side, there's got to be, you know, a professional there that just rides through the whole card, I would think, right? I mean, least, that's how they do it in the UFC. They assign a corner person to the corner so there's no surprises. Right. They don't just let anybody go. Like in Oregon and everywhere I've been uh, licensed to corner, there's no difference between being a – a corner person coach mitt holder mm -hmm. and a corner person coach cut person. Anybody who's licensed as a corner person right. is legally allowed to administer the medicine. Hmm. But that doesn't mean you, you're experienced, you're right. trained. You know what you're doing, you're I mean, ready. I think there should be some training, even just on the simple, like, like handling blood material and things like that, yeah. like proper disposal, proper cleanliness. You know, like it's a I would think seriously bloody job. As we saw this yeah. weekend, it's a seriously bloody job. Yeah. It's everywhere. So uh, it's ridiculous to just let somebody in there. And, but that's on, the, that's on the coach. That's on the head coach. you got to yeah. put together your team. Yeah. And, and I'd be calling the other fighters on the card. Hey, who are you using yeah. for your come in? If, and if they're paying, it seems like you piggyback on that. I'm sure mm -hmm. you get a deal because they're already there. They've flown out. Yeah. All the expenses are there. Yeah. So at, I don't get at it. At the local level, it's usually like, hey, 50 bucks, I'll work your corner. Yeah. You know, or less, you know, whatever. Yeah. Sometimes you volunteer just to be there for a guy because you got adrenaline and they don't. Yeah. But, okay, moving on. That, I think that wraps up Friday, right? That's Friday. Okay. Saturday, the, uh, the Amazon card, undercard. Uh, Mendoza uh, versus the man whose name I'm going to butcher. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bahochek. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Boy Ukrainian. Chuck. Yeah. 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 Uh, who I believe had 100% KO streak going into that fight. Mendoza never touched the canvas. Wow. So something's got to give in that fight. Uh, yeah. And it turned out, nope. Uh, <laughs> Mendoza's chin stood up. Bahochek gets the unanimous decision. Uh, really kind of bossed him around in there. Just looked like you know, the more powerful physical fighter pushing him forward the whole and time. And he had been preparing for Fundora. Right, exactly. Fundora gets bumped to the main. Yep. And so they pull in Fundora's boogeyman and yep. bring in Mendoza. Yep. And he delivered, he did his job. I mean, but yep. this guy, he's known for being tough now. He, you know, he's got to, he's got to get known for being a boxer a little bit more. Yeah. You know, he looks good in there to me. A lot of like horizontal movement and evasiveness and like he, he looks confident and skilled and then of course the chin makes up for a lot but but he doesn't look offensively like he has what it takes mm. to really get the top level people out of there well he got fundora out of there with that one punch but how much True. of that was fundora's but he's fault, losing you know? every round until that sure. point and you know not to take anything away from him obviously he connected there yeah but yeah it was, you yeah, need more than that lefty shot yeah absolutely that's how i feel too so he's like a, a fringe contender you yeah, know, and, uh, I, I like him. I took him in that fight. I thought as the sleeper, as an underdog candidate, I thought I thought he was good. Uh, and I was I was bummed to see how when I just couldn't get him off of him. Mm, you know? Yeah. Well, that was when I went to grab the pizza, so I missed that. Fight. Missed that. Well, that's that's, that's 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 under undercard. You know? Yeah, yeah I had a, had a lot going on that day. But next uh, fight up was uh, Julio Julio Cesar 
Martinez versus yes. Angelino Cordova. El Rey, the worst feet in the business. Yeah. This guy's <laughs> footwork is so bad. He literally yeah. walks around. He walks. I love it. But it's it's like he's just so confident in his punching power. His team is so confident in it that he gets away with this stuff. And he's 111 pounds, right? Like uh, he hits like a 140 pounder. Clearly, yeah. he just yeah. knocks people around. Yep. That's what I wrote here. Actually, I just wrote down power underline because you yeah. can just see it on display and the difference. Cordova, slick, look like sure. a, a way better boxer, way Definitely. more defensively sound, boxing long, kind of, you know, staying behind the jab, but doesn't matter. Yeah. He'd connect with a one two and you just shake it right off. And then, mm -hmm. you know, Martinez would give it back and you got two knockdowns in, in yeah. round two alone. Yeah, that was crazy. I mean, what a, what a fight. Yeah. What a warrior. I mean, but that's. That's, uh, you know, an example of somebody who kind of bends the rules of technicalities of boxing in their favor. Yeah. A little bit like uh, Siniesta Estrada did. She doesn't box like a pure boxer. It makes it hard for the pure boxer to, to participate. Right. You right. know, and, but it's frustrating to watch his feet, man. I mean, you almost got to cover up the bottom half of the screen. He's just got these little duck feet and just kind of walking around like this and yep. just walks up to you and hits you like a pinata, you know. It's just like he's trying to knock you in half. On one hand, I, I think it's, it's effective at cutting the ring off. To sure. somebody that's moving right because you're just you're, you're out of the boxing stance so you're covering more ground faster so i think there's a time and a place for it but when you yeah it, it just ends up looking sloppy and you end up being square the whole time oh, the taking time. so much damage and when he would be attacked his his footwork would be to step back right and then kind of flare his hands pop his gloves together and come back in right i'm thinking why doesn't dude jump on him then right hit him with the one two he absorbs it takes the smoke off it by stepping out of his stance, kind of fading into a square stance. Then he relaxes, resets, and comes forward again. I would urge my fighter to cover the distance there. Hit him, mm -hmm. watch him step back, hit him again, watch him right. step back. But then you try that, and then he starts swinging those haymakers. Exactly. So what do you do? You just peck and stick and move and, and, and work in your own spots. And what Cordova, I would notice what he would do is he'd get caught in transition because he'd slide out to one side or the other, you know, really gracefully get out of danger. But then because Martinez didn't need to reset at all, just he whack. just – throw something crazy out of this alternate stance and right. you know it's totally unpredictable yeah yeah definitely unpredictable and i think he's uh you know definitely going to be a, a star in that division for a long time yeah you know? it feels so, like it i mean who beats him i don't know, I don't know uh, yeah uh so moving on uh laura uh doing it for the old guys gets the ko round two just blasted him out of there that was that was the most vicious punch of the night well yeah i mean probably one of the worst matchups of the night um I don't know anything about this other guy, so yeah, I expected it to go down that way. I think he's Australian. That's all we've got. That's all we know. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe that's all we're going to know. That's all we're ever going to know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's next for Laura. I mean, I think he's doing it for the old guys, but at what point does he hang him up, you know? Yeah. I mean, not when you're knocking people out in the second round. As long yeah. as you keep doing that and getting paid. Yeah, I guess so. I just don't want to see him on the receiving end of some of that. Exactly. Action, you know? I think you have a you get through something a little too tough, maybe, or you don't get through it, and then that's when you think, well... Maybe yeah, that's the end. Yeah, well, good for him though. Way that was go, that was a good fight. Took the parlay on Martinez and Laura, so that uh that worked out. Got back on track after the Mendoza loss. Uh, then we move on to what was, I, I think, one of the more exciting fights looking into this weekend: uh, Romero versus Cruz. Romero Cruz, keep going. I'm gonna check, make sure we're still rolling. Um, yeah. Romero Cruz was the it was really the the main event, wasn't it? You know, people. <laughs> I, I was really excited for that fight, but I also was excited for uh, Zoo Fundora. I thought that was a much better replacement for Thurman. Sure. Uh, and and pe I think people underestimated that fight. But for sure, I think uh, Romero Cruz is really interesting because, uh, you know, people really had it a 50 50 fight, even though that wasn't the line, right? Uh, Cruz was the heavy favorite. Yeah. But I think you got, you know, two people that can crack, and it's like, well. Yeah. And I mean, uh, Cruz is coming up for his first fight at 140. True. For a belt, when it's a kind of a questionably valuable belt, mm -hmm. seeing as who's holding it yeah. and how he got it. But it's still a big jump right into the, you know, right into uh, title contention mm -hmm. in the new weight class. And I think uh, people were picking uh, Roley because he's just bigger. Yeah. He's just a bigger dude. Yeah. But, you know, Cruz really showed up, man. And, yeah. like, man, the crowd was going crazy. Yeah. The, they were barking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he had the he had the pit bull mask. Yeah, so that was terrifying. That was he looks sick. Like Hannibal Lecter. I mean, I think he looks scarier with the mask off. True. You watch some of those clips of him punching in slow motion. He's like glaring with this like yeah. anger. He just you know, I, you know, I think people really underestimated or overestimated the uh, the benefit of being big, right? Because sure. Cruz showed that fighting small 
You know, he comes in crouched under, mm -hmm. staying under shots, staying really tight and compact, and then just explodes up. It was the, to his advantage. Backing up to Friday, did you see on the undercard there was um, there was a uh, Doverson, mm -mm. French name, tall black kid, about a short Mexican guy. Uh, for, I didn't even catch his name. Uh, the dude was so short mm. comparatively, mm -hmm. but he was just you know won won the fight easily because yeah. he was being so aggressive. Yeah. The tall dude was just like struggling with even get his jab going. And so and it was a was good really, weekend for short guys. I, I thought really had a good game plan. I mean, he's on roller skates uh, in the second round, barely just trying to survive. Didn't go down though. Use the ropes uh, like a WWE. Stunt. I know, man. He was stumbling, dude. He was stumbling. <laughs> but he came back and he's you know moving around the ring, uh, you know trying trying to not let um, Cruz plant his feet. Mm -hmm. And then working a long jab and a one-two, and I thought it was the right plan, but you could just see that he couldn't get any respect. No, yeah, it was just like a couple punches, stumble away, a couple punches, stumble away. You could just see it coming. The momentum was building, yeah, for Cruz, and he was going to get something in there eventually. Yep. And uh, wow, man, he really did it. Uh, I was, you know, we'll see what comes what comes of this. Like, is this a rematch against the tank rematch? Davis at yeah. 140? We'll see. I mean, that would be a, a smart move, but. I think he's he's undersized at 140 relative to some of the bigger names, but I'd like to see him in there with anybody. I mean, I'd like to see him in there with Tio at 140. That would be great. Ryan, that would be a crazy fight. Uh, I think anybody against um, Devin Haney is the yeah. fight to make, right? Yeah. No, I mean, Haney can unify, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe that's next. That should be it. that should be the move. Yeah, because they're you fighting know. right coming up quick, and yeah. it's kind of a good in sync to to catch something and. And Haney's just way too long and and smart and strong for that kid, I think. I think it would be tough. I think it would be similar to the Valdez Stevenson fight. Absolutely. Right? Just couldn't get couldn't get past the jab because he would he would not he would not only throw the jab, but he would control with the jab. Yeah. He would turn him with the jab. He yeah. would, you know. And then just forearm, enough power whatever. to make that transition getting inside a little scary. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that was a super entertaining though. I mean, hard act to follow mm -hmm. going into the main event, I thought. Because yeah. the crowd was clearly peaking at that point. And then it's yeah. like, okay, what's next? What's next? Yep. And then what came next, we can talk about now. Talk about corner work. And, La noche and de la sangre. Yeah. The night <laughs> yeah. of blood. Exactly. Oh, man. Yeah, Sebastian Fundora taking on uh, Tim Zhu, late replacement, much taller, uh, southpaw fighter mm -hmm. uh, from Keith Thurman. Also, I read uh, the biggest height differential of any fight outside of the heavyweight division ever in boxing. That's impressive. It's crazy. I mean, that guy is just, he looks like the Slender Man, you know, in there. He does. Yeah, kind of freaky looks looking. Like it takes you a minute man. to adjust to yeah. seeing him out there in his trunks. You're like, well, this doesn't look right. Yeah. But he boxed really nice, you know, and and, and he, I think he won the fight. I was surprised to see a judge had it that the was other a, way. That was a little crazy. Yeah. By a wide margin. Too. Yeah. It was several rounds. Yeah. yeah. Which, was, which was strange. Uh, you know, I think the big question here in this fight is, is the outcome different without the cut? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, they saw those first two rounds. The momentum was building mm -hmm. in his favor, and then that the elbow wasn't wasn't Fundora's fault at all. He had, he was tucking it in. Yeah, and well, dude, came he's forward. all elbow. Yeah, he's... I know. And he, he dude head butted his elbow. Yeah, so it's yeah. not really his his fault. Fundora's fault, which is great because you know you can't say he he stole the victory by any means. Right. Um. The, what happened happened, but I think had it not been for the cut, it would have been a a clear win for. Yeah. For a zoo, if not a, a early stoppage, third or fourth round, you know. That's, that that's how I saw it. I, I was, you know, unfortunately dove into the comment section and saw a lot of people talking otherwise, which I didn't see. I saw Zoo really lining, getting his foot on the outside. He broke his nose in like the second round. You he, see them, yeah. and he did another thing. Like kind of, he, he dude moved around the corner, tried to relax, and he popped up with the right hand from the wrong stance right. and speared him with that South jab. jab. Yeah, yeah, popped his head right up. I think that's might have been the one that broke his nose because he had a real reaction to that. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, he was on track to destroy him, but the cut came. And then we got to talk about the, you know, the fighter's always going to go fight. They're not going to say, I don't want to fight. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's the corner's responsibility to say, my fighter can't see. You can't stop the bleeding. Let's call it. And yeah. if they would have stopped the fight in the fourth round and gone to the cards, I think it would have come out a draw. Right. I'd like to see the official but scorecard. But have to stop it, right? You can't stop it as the corner. No, you can. You can? You can. Uh, you, all you have to say, you have to tell the commission that my guy can't see. And then the commissioner will stop it. Interesting, because he's he can't I see. figured it'd be a forfeit, right? If you stop it from the corner, and the and the doctor or the official, right, has to stop it as the the third party. But if right. they could have done that, they absolutely should. Absolutely, should like have. Uh, you know, you have to just if you say I can't see or right. you know, 
you know, they're, when they're coming up and they're, the doctor, every time the doctor came in, I thought, they're going to stop it now. Yeah, they're going to stop it now. They, they never did. It was, and, the, and the cut wasn't getting any better. Um, Do you think that's a cut that should have been under control? I don't think so. I've never seen anybody be able to stop a cut on, on the top of the head before. Okay. There's so many blood vessels close to the surface. Mm -hmm. And once, it, and that was a gash. I mean, it was deep. deep. It was at least an inch or a half long. Yeah. Super deep. So, yeah, I don't think um, they had, with any medicine, you could have been able to control that. You could have maybe, best case scenario, you have, you have adrenaline in the beginning, and when you get that, you get that vascular constrictor going, and then you would finish it with like a avatine, which is like a coagulant, so mm -hmm. maybe form a scab. But right. him being shorter, he was getting touched there all right. night. I mean, yep. you notice, I noticed in the post-fight interview, it wasn't bleeding at all. Mm. Like, well, yeah, to that point, right, at the look at the first 20, 30 seconds of every round. They kind of get under control. He'd come out really dominate, right, when he, when he had walking good him sight, down. walk him down, boom, boom, boom. And then all of a sudden the cut would open up again, blood in his eye, mm -hmm. he couldn't see. The performance would just go down because yeah. he's, he's not as adept. You know? Yeah, everything's slippery. He can't see shit. Yeah. I think they did him a disservice. I think they should have called the fight at the fourth round, told the doctor my fighter can't see. Doctor's going to wave off the fight. It's going to go to the judges. I'd like to see the official scorecards at the fourth round mm -hmm. because I saw the draw at that point, too, too. He won the first two, lost the second two because mm -hmm. he was bleeding all over the fucking place. And then it would have been a bummer, but everybody was still high off the, the fight before. Right. And nobody's going to take it away from him when they say he's just fucking leaking everywhere. Yeah. Run it back in three or four months and, you know, and don't lose your titles. But his, yeah. he's lost well, he does that. He's got a rematch clause, so he's going to get Fundora again. I don't know. I heard it was a verbal and not a, 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 verbal. a verbal rematch clause. There's nothing in writing. Wow. And the way they, nobody said rematch in the post-fight interviews. Hmm. He started talking about Crawford. I, I, re, I re, at least did a little bit, five minutes of research before this and, and read at least one article that said there's a rematch clause, but maybe they didn't have it straight. They thought it was written and it's verbal. Because if you're, if you're Fundora, and I think he's a stand-up guy. Uh, I stand up real tall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he... I think you got to give Zoo the rematch just because of the cut, right? Because of the dynamic of the fight. It, it just doesn't feel quite right. Once yeah. you beat him twice, you're clearly the guy. Right. But is the payday of a Spence or maybe even a Crawford, I mean, wow. Yeah. Hard to pass that up. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's the business of boxing. I mean, Errol Spence is there for a reason, mm -hmm. you know, to you know, yeah. make a show of being the next in line. Um, but... Yeah, I think it should be rematched, but I don't think it will be not right away. Mm. I mean, if, if ever, we'll see. That makes me sad for Zoo. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a bummer deal. That's why I say his corner really let him down there. They should have done something different. Uh, but I think they their plan was basically let's just keep it from bleeding too bad. And because I saw they had the medicine at one point, mm -hmm. and they had their adrenaline. Unlike the other fight that was closed, you can take that top all the way off, and, mm -hmm. and, and they'll and you you don't have to have a syringe all the time. You can take the top all the way off and literally just dip your Wow. Your swabs in. Right. Like a dunk. Dunk. And I'm thinking, and it wasn't the biggest vial. But I'm thinking, maybe they ran out, you know? Maybe they all right. oh, oh, panicking in those first couple <laughs> rounds. Oh, man. And they're just dumping it on there. And then, like, three or four rounds later, it's, they're running out of medicine. If you got to cut that big and you're putting adrenaline in it, isn't that just entering your bloodstream? Aren't you just high as hell on <laughs> adrenaline? Well, I think when it's topically applied like that. But it's it, not topical, right? Because now it's, you got a big open cut in your head. Yeah, but doesn't blood pressure work where if there's an opening in the that it pumps out it's and it doesn't pull it in? Maybe that's the, right? that's the core problem you're trying to solve. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah. If it was pulling in, that'd be a little different. It'd be sucking in all that adrenaline in your right. blood. You know why adrenaline is a controlled substance and extremely hard to find for mm. cornermen? Why? It's it's uh, because they, it's what they would use to. Um, you ever see Narcos mm. TV show? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they would use to torture people to keep them awake for for interrogations and like rough and like right. you know. Well, that's basically what this was. Yeah, well, yeah, keep them awake, keep yeah. interrogating them. Mm -hmm. But man, it was a, uh, it was hard to watch. A bloody weekend, and as a cut man, watching these guys work, I'm like, man, it's a tough night in the office, you know. But I think, you know, a couple of years ago there was a, uh, a lady fight. What was her name? Uh, the one from Puerto Rico, the chick who just got soap in her eye or whatever and had to pull out of the fight. Uh, Jake, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Jake Paul's mm -hmm. promotion. What's her? Serrano. Serrano. Yeah. She was in a fight 
her opponent got cut on top of the head and it was bleeding in her face all night like that. They couldn't stop it either. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, from what I've been told and what I've seen, it's just, it's not going to stop. You have yeah, to... luck of the draw, right? Getting cut on the side of the head or under the eye, way better. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like I mean, the best case scenario would be under the eye, but it's really rare. It's usually above the eye and the brow, the ridge. But well, I took Zoo by, by uh, KO or TKO, seven through 12. I think that was the right bet. You know, even with the cut, obviously it changed the complexion of the fight tremendously. But, you know, to defend the corner, it, it still kind of felt like he might find that shot. Yeah, that's what he was trying there. to do. He was trying to just kind of walk through, brush, uh, smack some shit aside, get yeah. up inside and hit one big shot. Yeah, he never looked like he was fully out of the fight no. or surviving or anything. No, but it's something you can't plan B for, okay? Yeah. As a coach, when you're working with your fighter, you're like, all right, if he comes out and he goes southpaw, we're ready for that. If he comes out and he's aggressive, we're ready for that. If he comes right. out he's ev evasive, we're ready for that. If he comes out swinging haymakers, we're ready for that. But you don't often prepare to be blinded in the fight. Right, yeah, put have, this blindfold on. Yeah, exactly. We'll Just look through this. Uh, what are Raul? What's his name? Maro, mm. uh, the 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 announcer guy. The the crimson mask. Right. Yeah, it's like his favorite thing to say. You're just like rolling your eyes, this dude. You know, he's got like a list of cool things to say that he right. like pulls yeah. up every time. That's what he, I have here. That's yeah, you gotta have your list of cool things. I mean, I, I kind of want to be that guy, but yeah. um, he's a really cool dude. I thought interesting. What do you think about Amazon Prime's first uh, first bit, you know, foray into boxing? Foray into boxing here. I mean, I thought it was a great card, top to bottom. I mean, I I enjoyed the I night so fully, too. and I think you know, I'm really curious to see the numbers that it did. I haven't looked it up yet, but. When I when I logged in to buy it, I was wondering, is it going to be right on the homepage, mm -hmm. right, or am I going to have to search for Go it? To sports. And it was right there on the top. And to me, the exposure that Amazon—I mean, how many just homepage visits yeah. do they get on my TV? It's like a Fire, Roku, or whatever. You turn right. it on; it's there as an ad before you even pick wow. your streaming platform. You know, yeah. the scrolling ads. And it was even still there. Last night when I turned the TV on, hmm. to, as an ad for you know, for, so people can to go still go do the rewind and go do the replay, which I think is still available to to pay for. Interesting. Um, I wonder how I that, love that they're doing that because that's one thing I've always hated about pay per views is if you can't watch the fight, a lot of times there's no way to buy it post fight. Sure. You're just like, well, I'll wait three months for it to be on YouTube. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Daily Motion, that's the streaming service. Where you get. Hmm. YouTube, no good for rewatching fights. You know, Daily, like motion. Daily Motion. Yeah, because but are they up there right away? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I rewatched the some the Estrada uh, by a fight. Uh, if you look for it on YouTube, it's all highlights. They, they take it down. Right. Daily Motion's like the okay. the hidden the uh, hidden back door. You heard it here first. Yeah. Right That's here. boxing. That's right. That's boxing. So that let's look to the. Uh, oh yeah, one quick update for local boxing. Uh, mm -hmm. Local boxer from Bend, Kevin Ochoa, knocked his opponent out. Nice. Uh, down in Klamath Falls, mm -hmm. brutal KO. Like put this man down mm. for his second fight, uh, so he's uh, now go, advancing Kevin. to two and zero for Kevin. Oh, Keep yeah. an eye on him in the 147 pound division. It's nice to see a local kid putting the work in. Mm -hmm. uh, we were supposed to be on that card with Aaron Thompson, but his fight got moved to later in the month, April 20th. Right? April 20th at the Clackamas Armory. We got a lot of local fighters on that show. I think I wrote them down here. We got Caldera. Uh, that's Lorenzo Caldera. We got Aaron Thompson. We got Joe Aguilar. Uh, Alex Kazak, uh, Hayden Allen, Alberto Rivas, you know, lots of local talent on this fight. Um, and it's going to be our own little, I'm like, looking forward to that. I will be ringside. Local party. You know? Yeah, man, I'm going to be ringside too for two of those fights. Yeah, that's we'll a little see. different. You've got some I duties. Know. I've got some work to do. I might cut yeah. man for some other people. We'll see who's there and what's going on. But mm -hmm. I got my work cut out for me. I'm going to have probably the first fight and the second to last fight. Have, there's six boxing matches, and they might also have. Some mixed martial arts on this card too. That's how this arena wars people do it. So okay. we'll, see, we'll see if there's. Last time you know there was kickboxing and there was a, there was even a Muay Thai thing with the traditional music mm. and all that. So, but right. the uh, six boxing matches, I think that's enough for one that's card. A, that's a stacked card. That's yeah. that's pretty good. Plus, we all got to get home and then watch uh, Haney Garcia. <sighs> okay, so let's talk about the future. Uh, coming up next weekend, Hitchens uh, versus Lemos. Uh, Diego Pacheco's on the undercard. Not the most exciting card in the world, but definitely going to be watching that one. Mm -hmm. um, What's that see? on? Yeah. I don't even know. Okay. I didn't, I didn't write that Not the zone, me. if you're going to watch it. I don't know, man. <laughs> I can't do the zone. I can't get behind it. Um, also coming up uh, the next weekend uh, at a Corpus Christi, Jared Anderson uh, versus Riyad Murray. Interesting fight. I think, you know. Jared probably gets the stoppage. Seems like the default uh, bet to place on him. Yeah, top rank doesn't take a lot of risks for their guys. Yeah. Um, and they're still building him. You know, he's kind of had a slower build than uh, the other 
top ranked everybody we were talking about earlier, um, in, uh, Torres. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he's had all this shit going on with his personal life. It's, uh, right. And he's running from the cops and, just for yeah. fun. Yeah. It's, just, it seems like an extremely dangerous, you know, it's a weird hobby. Movie. Especially for someone who comes across very uh, calculated and business oriented, right? Yeah. He's always said, hey, I'm going A to B, fastest route possible, and then I'm out of box. And then mm -hmm. he wants to retire at 28 or something like that. Yeah, a lot of people online speculating that his heart's not in it and he's, you know, all this and all that. But hmm. he's, you know, a lot of people have been saying he's the next great American heavyweight. Yeah. So well, he's got the talent for sure. If he wants to take it there, it seems like he'll have a good run. Yeah, well, it's going to be a hard road, but I'd like to see yeah. him do it. So I don't know anything about this other guy, but I wouldn't put a dollar on uh, on the other guy. You know, he's a, a cruiserweight um, who I think fought his last fight at light heavyweight or cruiserweight. So he's coming up, and that, that feels like a recipe for disaster there. Yeah, you know? if your name doesn't start with a U and end in a K. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> or uh, what's that other guy who did that back in the day? Uh, there he's up on the wall right over there. Uh, Holyfield. Oh, he's another guy who successfully went cruiser to heavy. I actually didn't know that he started a cruiserweight. Yeah, hmm. um, he's another one. Uh, Southpaw, um, Michael Moore. He's he moved mm -hmm. up to and became a champion. Didn't have the storied career that Holyfield or Usyk have had, but he did successfully make the transition. And some people grow into it. At this point, you know, Usyk standing next to Fury, the size difference doesn't look like the story. No, me, no, right? And yeah, I mean. Fury is just like a troll person. He's so huge and gangly yeah. and awkward looking, but Usyk is not a small guy either. No. And, you know, they put him, they list him at 6'9 or something like that, but you see him there and that they're 6'6 six, six or 6'5. Six, sure. You know? Yeah, they, everybody's lying about their height in yeah. boxing. They're trying to manipulate in their favor all the time. Nobody stands up straight anyways in the ring. Yeah, you yeah know? exactly. Also on that undercard, Abdullah Mason coming back. Oh, um, yeah, that kid's got yeah that big left-hand KO recently. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole crop of young talent. Him, this other kid, Hitchens, you know, all these guys are just like killing it. You mm -hmm. know, and they got this um, this kind of similar style. It's like a patient, explosive style. Yes, exactly. It's like a, it's like a evolution of the Mayweather style, mm -hmm. where they took the later half of Mayweather's career with the patience and the defense, right? And then they put in the earlier half of Mayweather's career with the power. I can't even say that. Maybe they put so it's like what? Oh, here's a fight we didn't talk about. Kermel Moten. Hmm. Did you catch that? Mm -mm. It was the first fight. It was on the free portion of the Amazon Prime card. Uh, he had originally been put in as the, the walkout fight, which he's done before. It's the fight after the fight. Right. After the main event. Um, but they moved him up because somebody dropped out and got sick. But he's in place here as the first thing. He's 17 years old, 2-0, and goes in, oh. fights this guy Cuba, Cuba from L.A. And it was a fucking back and forth, eight-rounder. I mean, mm. it was a hell of a fight. Probably the most entertaining fight I've seen recently of mm. that, at that level, you know. Mm -hmm. And for the kid to be in his third fight, fighting an eight rounder, you know, they're yeah. really priming this guy. But they're like, the story is he's he's Mayweather's next protege. He's had him in the ring since he was eight. Interesting. You know, okay. um, he's not in the corner training him, but right. I think he's like been bankrolling his career since right, he was like right, eight right. years old. He's invested, and now he's he's paying off. This guy looks amazing. He looks like Mayweather morphed with with Tank Davis in one. Hmm. Right, like a patient puncher, yeah. sound defense, but then can really crack yeah. when he lets it go. Absolutely, hmm. yeah, it's just amazing. So you should go back and watch that moment. Yeah, I'm going to now. But uh, yeah, Abdullah Mason, he's in that same kind of category for me with these young, explosive fighters, and they're just on another level at the young age. It's like what, what Put is going Keyshawn on? Here? Davis in that category. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you know, uh, where what are these guys drinking? What's in the water? You know, like because they're at a whole another level than these other dudes. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see that whole crop come up and eventually all start fighting each other. Yeah. But they all feel like they're on a collision course, and I really hope that the tone in boxing stays with the best fight and the best. It feels like there's been kind of breakthroughs there with a couple fighters um, yeah. launching out. So, Yeah, um, best fight and the best. That's what we want. Yeah. Well, but, we'll be back next week with picks. Oh, we got we, we, can, we can go a little longer. I was just making sure that, can't, that we're still recording. We got uh, – that takes us, what, two weeks out? Mm -hmm. Let's just look a little further to the future. Quick picks. Okay. okay? Haney Garcia. Oh, it's got to be Haney. Okay. The question is how. Are you Just taking... the pick. Okay, all right, all right. Quick pick. One more time. Haney Garcia. Oh, Haney. Canelo Munguia. <sighs> got to go Canelo. Uh, Inouye and Neary. Louis Neary. Inouye. Come on. Uh, Loma Cambosis. Oh, Loma. Navarrete Baranchik. Navarrete. And Fury Usyk. Usyk by, by KO. Wow. Okay. Or TKO. Wow. Okay. That, so that takes us out into March, April, May. 
May 18th. Okay, so that's a look into the future. Always bet the boxer. That's what I say. Always bet on the boxer. Okay, so um, and this next week, we'll see uh, We'll see how Hitchens and Lemos plays out. But uh, what is your pick in Anderson? I'm picking Anderson for uh, the 13th. Okay. I got to see what the line is, but I'm, I'm going to guess Anderson by stoppage is about as close to a lock as you can get. All right. All right. Well, that wraps up that boxing inaugural boxing. episode. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Stay in the gym. Let's get a workout in. Now it's worked out. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm like. That's Boxing Podcast. I'm Dust and Coach. That's